live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Good. Good morning everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite. We are here in the Orange County Convention Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with Stu Miniman. Stu, this is Microsoft's big show. 26,000 people from around the globe, all descending on Orlando. Uh, this is the big, the big infrastructure show. Thoughts, impressions now that we're on day two of a three-day show. Yeah, Rebecca, uh, you know, last year I had this feeling that it was a little bit too much talking about like the Windows 10 transition and the latest updates to Office 365. Um, I could certainly wanted to make sure that we really dug in more to what's going on with Azure, what's happening in the developer space, even though they do have a separate show for developers. It's Microsoft Build. Uh, they actually have a huge partner show. Uh, and so they, you know, Microsoft has a lot of shows, so it's what is this show that is decades old, um, and you know, really, it is the combination of you know, you know, Microsoft as a platform today. Satya Nadella yesterday talked about empowering the world. Uh, this morning, uh, Scott Hanselman was in a smaller theater talking about app devs, uh, and you know, he came out and he's like, "Hey, developers, isn't it a little bit early for you this morning?" Everybody's laughing. He said, "You know, even though we're kicking off at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, he said, you know, that, that's really early, especially for anybody coming from the West." Coast, uh, he was wearing his Will Code for Taco shirt, uh, and we're going to have Scott on later today, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but, you know, where does Microsoft sit in this landscape is something we've had. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time looking at, you know, the cloud marketplace. Uh, you know, Microsoft has put themselves as the clear number two behind AWS. Um, but trying to figure out because you know, SaaS is a big piece of what Microsoft does um, and they have their software estate and their customer relationships. So how many of those that are what we used to call Windows shops and you had uh, you know, Windows people are going to uh, start, you know, will, they just, will it be .NET, will it be other operating systems, uh, will it come into Azure, uh, you know, where do they play? And the answer is Microsoft is going to play a lot of places um, and what was you know, really uh, kind to put on with a point yesterday is it's not just about the Microsoft solutions, it is about the ecosystem. Uh, they really have embraced uh, you know, the, their role, um, very supportive of open source, uh, and uh, you know, trust is something that I know both you and I have been pointing in on because uh, in the big tech market, Microsoft wants to you know, stand up and say, you know, we are the most trusted out there, and therefore you know, turn to us, and we will help you through all of these journeys. So you're bringing up so many great points and I want to now go through each and every one of them. So, so absolutely, we are hearing that this is a kinder, gentler Microsoft. We had Dave Totten on yesterday and he was, as, as, you, as you just described, just talking about how much Microsoft is embracing and supporting customers who are using a little bit of Microsoft here, a little bit of uh, other companies. I'm not going to name names, but they, but they are, but they are seemingly demanding, I just want best of breed and this is what I'm going to do. And Microsoft is supporting that, championing that. And of course we're seeing this as a trend in the broader technology industry. However, it feels different because it's Microsoft doing Microsoft doing this, and they've been so proprietary in the past. Yeah, well, and, and Rebecca, it's our job on the cube. Actually, I'm going to name names, and actually, Microsoft <laughs> okay. is embracing of this. So, the the thing I'm most interested in at the show uh, was Azure Arc, and I was trying to figure out is this a management platform? Um, and at the end of the day, really, it is. There's Kubernetes in there, and it's specifically tied to applications. So they're going to start with databases, specifically. Uh, my understanding, SQL is the first piece, and saying. It, it, it sounds almost like the next incarnation of platform as a service or PaaS and say I can take this, I can put it you know, on-premises, in Azure, or on AWS, any of those environments, manage all of them the same. Um, reminds me of what I hear from VMware with Tanzu. Uh, VMworld Europe is going on right now in Barcelona. Big announcement uh, is to, uh, you know, the uh, the relationship with VMware on Azure, uh, I, if I got it right, it's actually in beta now. So, you know, Arc being announced and the next step of where Microsoft and VMware are going together, it is not a coincidence. They are not 
severing the ties with uh, VMware. VMware, of course, partners with all the cloud providers, most notably AWS. Uh, Dave Totten yesterday talked about Red Hat. You want Kubernetes? If you want OpenShift, if you're a Red Hat customer and you've decided that the way I'm going to leverage and use and have my applications run are through OpenShift, Microsoft says, great. And the best, most secure place to run that environment is on Azure. So, that, 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 that's great. So Microsoft, uh, you know, when you talk about choice, uh, when you talk about flexibility, um, and you talk about agility, because it is kinder and, and gentler, but Satya said they have that tech intensity. So all the latest and greatest, the new things that you want, um, you can get it from Microsoft, but they are also going to meet you where you are. That was Jeremiah Dooley, uh, the Azure advocate, you know, said that. There's you know, lots of bridges we need to make. Microsoft has lots of teams. It's not just the DevOps, it's not just, you know, letting the old people do their own thing, uh, you know, from your virtualization through your containerization and everything in between microservices, serverless, and the like. Um, Microsoft has teams, they have partners. Uh, sure, you know, that you could buy, you know, everything in, uh, in, in Microsoft, but uh, they know that there are a lot of, lots of partners and pieces, um, and between uh, their partners, their ecosystem, their channel, and their go-to-market, they're going to pull this together uh, to, to help you leverage what you need to move your business forward. So, so next I want to talk about Scott Hanselman, who was up on the main stage, we're going to have him on the show, and he was, as you said, adorned in coder dude attire with a cool t-shirt and, and snappy, snappy kicks. Uh, but his, his, his talk was app development for everyone, and this is really Microsoft's big push, democratizing computing. Hey, anyone can do this. And Satya Nadella, as, as we've talked about on the show, 61% of jobs, in, of technologist jobs, are not in the technology industry. So this is something that Microsoft sees as a trend that's happening in the employment market, so they're saying, hey, we're, we're going to help you out here. Uh, but, but Microsoft is not a hardware company, so how does this really change things for Microsoft in terms of the products and services well, right. it so, offers? So, so really Really what we're talking about here, we're talking about developers, right? 61% of uh, jobs openings for developers are outside the tech sector, uh, and the, you know, the, the high level message that Scott had is your tools, your language, your apps. And what we have is, just as we were talking about choice of clouds, you know, it's choice of languages. Um, sure, you know, they'd love to say, you know, .NET is wonderful, but you want your Java, your PHP, uh, all of these options, and chances are, not only are you going to use many of them, but even if you're working on a total solution, different groups inside your company might be using them, and therefore you need tools that can span them. Uh, the interesting example they used was Chipotle, and if there's a difference between when you're ordering and going through the delivery service and uh, you know, some of the back end pieces and data needs to flow between them and it can't be, oh wait, I've got silos of my data, I've got silos of all these other environments. Um, so you know, developer tools are all about uh, you know, ha having the company just work faster and, and work across uh, environments. Uh, I was at uh, Ansible Fest uh, show earlier this year and you know, Ansible is one of those tools uh, that actually, you know, different roles where you have to have the, the product owner, the, the developer, uh, or the, the operations person, they all have their way into that tool. Um, and so Microsoft showing some, some very similar things um, as to when I build something, it's not, oh wait, we all chose this language, and so many of the tools was, okay, well, I had to standardize on something, but that didn't fit into what the organization needed. So I need to be able to get uh, to, to what they all had. Uh, just like eventually when I'm picking my own taco, you know, I can roll it, bowl it, uh, you know, soft or hard shell, it was and a choose cool all analogy. my toppings in there. So uh, uh, it is Taco Tuesday here yes. at Microsoft Ignite, and uh, the, the developers like their choices of tools, uh, and just like they like their tacos. And they like their extra guac. <laughs> so going back to to one of the other points you made at the very opening, and this is the competitive dynamic that we have here. We had David Davis and Scott Lowe on yesterday from Actual Tech Media. Scott was incredibly bullish about Microsoft's uh, about Microsoft and saying it could really overtake AWS, not tomorrow, but within the next decade. Of course, uh, the choice for Jedi it certainly could accelerate that. What do you make of it? I mean, do you think do you think that's still pie in the sky here? AWS is so far ahead. So 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 look. First of all. Uh, when you look at the growth rates, uh, first of all, just to take the actual number, we know what AWS's revenue is. Last quarter, AWS did $9 billion, uh, and they're still growing at about a 35% clip. 
When I look at Microsoft, they have their intelligent cloud bucket, which is Azure, Windows Server, SQL Server, and GitHub, uh, and you know, that was 10.8 billion, and you say, oh, okay, you know, that, that's, that's really big, but you know, last year Azure did about $12 billion, uh, so, AWS is still two to three times larger when you look at infrastructure as a service. But SaaS, hugely important piece of what's going on in the cloud opportunity. Uh, AWS really is more of the platform and infrastructure service. They absolutely have some of the PaaS pieces. Azure started out as PaaS and has this, so you're trying to count these buckets and you know, Azure is still growing at, uh, last quarter was 64%, so if you look at the projection, is it possible for uh, Azure to catch up in the next you know, three years? Well, you know, Azure's growth rate is also slowing down, so I don't think it matters that much. There is a number one and a number two, and they're both clear, valid choices for customer. And you know, this morning at breakfast, I was, I was talking to a customer, uh, and they are very heavily a Microsoft shop, but absolutely they've got some AWS uh, on the side. They're doing Azure, uh, they've got a lot of Azure uh, being here at a Microsoft show, and when I go to AWS, even when I talk to the uh, companies that are all in on AWS, oh, you got O365? Of course we do. Oh, if you're starting to do O365, are there any other services that you might be using out of Azure? Yeah, that's possible. I know Google is in the mix, Alibaba's in the mix. Um, Oracle, well we're not going to talk about Oracle <laughs> Cloud, but we talk about Oracle um, because they will uh, allow their, their, their services to run on Azure specifically. We talked about that a lot yesterday, especially how that ties into Jedi. So, uh, look, uh, you know, I, 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 I think it is great when we have a healthy, competitive marketplace uh, today, really, it is a two-horse race. It is AWS and Azure are the main choices for customers. Everyone else is really a niche player. Um, even company like IBM, there's good solutions that they have, but they play in a multi-cloud world. Uh, Google has some great data services, uh, and absolutely a, a, a important player when you talk about multi-cloud for all they've done with Kubernetes and Istio. Uh, I'm going to be at KubeCon in a couple of weeks, and you know, Google is front and center there, but if you talk about the general marketplace, Microsoft has a lot of customers, they have a lot of applications, and therefore, can they continue to mature that market and, and grow their environment? Absolutely. AWS has so many customers, they have, you know, the, the, the marketplace um, is stronger. It's an area that I want to dig in a little bit more at uh, this show, is the Azure marketplace, how much we talk about the ecosystem, but you know, can I just procure through the cloud uh, and, and make it simpler? Uh, you know, a big thing we've talked about is cloud in the early days was supposed to be cheap and simple, and it is neither of those things, so how do we make it easier so that we can go from the 20% of applications in the public cloud uh, you know, up to 50% you know, or more? Uh, because it, it is not about all, everything goes to the public cloud, but you know, making customers put the applications and their data in the right place at the right time with the right services. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, of course, uh, and, and then we, we haven't even talked about edge computing, which Microsoft has a, has a big push on, especially with their partners. We talked to HP a little bit about that yesterday. Um, but uh, the, the uh, really the uh, uh, surface area that this show and Microsoft covers is immense and global. It is indeed, and we are going to, this is our second day of three, day, three days of coverage, and we're going to be getting into all of those things. We've got a lot of great guests. We have uh, Cube host Keith Townsend, Dave Cahill, a former Wikibon guy, a lot of other fantastic people. So I'm excited to get, in with, get, it, in, get it on with you today. St Thanks, Stu. Rebecca, great stuff. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite.